Well, folks, welcome to the first in a new sort of side thing on the Woof podcast, our hyperfixation episodes of Loud Equals Funny. How are we doing, folks? We're doing pretty good. What are we Even... officially going to call these? That's I a mean, good question. I don't have an we idea. We keep calling them hyperfixation, so I guess that works. I uh, mean, we, yeah, could call I them, yeah. we could call it like Tism episode or something. I don't know. I, I was thinking Loud Equals Funny hyperfixations just because I hadn't uh, thought of it. Creative. It's a oh, little yeah. long, but it, we'll it, figure it out. The thing is, well, it, well, with that also is like we could spin it off into our own, like a separate channel of that too. I mean, that's so here, here's, like it, well, separate I, I, podcast I was, feed, I should say. Yeah, I, I guess what what I was thinking for the title because I kind of had to run with that idea because it was the only one I could think of is like the name of the thing and then dash, you know, loud equals funny hyperfixations or something yeah. like that. I, yeah. I can see time I mean, like, like I that. say, we'll we'll figure it out. But basically, we're 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 going to be spending way too much time talking about uh, uh, some stupid shit, various stupid shit that we all care about. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some of us will care about it to lesser degrees or greater degrees. We I pick mean, this I mean, one. Some of us first. will not care about it at all because I I know yeah. when I get oh, the yeah. zombies. It's, it's yeah. too, I'm taking two men hostage. Me and me and Bane have the uphill battle. I have to do Wheel of Time. And he has to do well, zombies. I, no, hang on. I like Wheel of Time. It's not fully an uphill battle. <laughs> I guess, but yeah, no. Uh, we picked this one because we keep fucking bringing up Assassin's Creed for one reason or another. It's I'm not even that joke. big of a fan. I like 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 maybe two or three of the games, maybe. But like, man, yeah, me, me we sure bring it up are, on every episode. Me, me and Tristan yeah. are really the ones who like this series the most. I, I think I, I've played most of the games, and I'll admit some of them I don't like. Yeah, some of them fucking suck, but some of them I mean, are amazing. Like but... I only got into the series because I always thought it was like, I remember when the first one came out and I, I saw like ads for it, and I'm like, oh, this looks kind of cool. You know, in the early era of like seventh gen, where everything, every game looked like it was going to change the fucking industry or whatever. Sadly, that one did. Yeah, uh, it, but it took yeah, the I, a bit there. I, 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 I like Assassin's Creed. Like the first one, and yeah, sad. Sadly, it did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh. it was just kind of an evolution of like Prince of Persia too at the time. You know, something I, I did realize I didn't intro this. Uh, we we should also mention that this episode is brought to you by Cushy Dreams. Yes, uh, loud twenty five at checkout, folks. K U S H Y Cushy Dreams. Cushydreams dot com. K U S H Y Dreams dot com. No dashes, no spaces, no exclamation marks. None of that shit. Yep. And yeah. uh, I'm a little bit mellow today because uh, yesterday we recorded episode 10 of Loud Equals Funny where I got high in the middle of it and I'm still feeling some of the physical effects. So hey, if you, if you, if you want to feel nice or if you have stress or trouble sleeping. Oh, yeah. so, again, so also as long, use, as, you're, as long as you're 21 and in the U.S. Also, yes, please only be 21 or older. We don't want any suits yeah. yes i mean i'm not in the u.s but as i said yesterday buy weed folks and, and yeah. buy it through here and it helps us and it helps you and it and it, it's a good it's a win-win for everybody it helps the planet a good yeah. time had by all yeah hell yeah but yeah um so, uh, sorry where were we at <laughs> well i i was we just saying we that like assassin's creed yeah, I, I was saying that, like, I only got into the series, like, years later because I knew Tristan was a fan, and I'm like, well, he's, you know, got good taste, generally. Uh, so, yeah, maybe, and I, like, he's a, specifically, you, would ta you were talking about, like, 2, I, I remember, at the time, and I was, good, yeah. I was like, you know, I should play 2, because I'd heard, I'd heard things, I remember V talked a lot about, like, hugging, what is it, Da Vinci, the character in that, that you oh, get, like, the, the super yes, quick yeah, hug you, QTE? You, 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 you get to hug him uh, when you're in Venice. Yeah, uh, like great. I, that was a big V meme game, but I never got into it until like 2018 or something. And then I, and then I played too, and it's like, I don't say what you will about what happened to the to the fucking AAA gaming industry, but you know, uh, Assassin's Creed Two, it's pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. first one also. The yeah, Assassin's, like... Assassin's Creed One is frequently overlooked. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. get to that when we get to like the chronology of this whole thing because i definitely want to talk about how the series is like gone on and become shittier with time <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's had various like ups and the like, peaks and valleys really is like dizzying highs and then utter fucking lows and it's kind of impressive yeah. 
Like I personally, I you know, going back to my first game, there, there it, it was janky now, but looking back on it, it had so many unique mechanics at the time. It it was kind of groundbreaking. Oh yeah, yeah. And like on honestly, I'm glad that the uh, that the series seems to be going back at least for a little bit to those like investigation, you know. When those Social games felt like Assassin's kind of, Creed games. Yeah, yeah, when they felt like Assassin's Creed games and not The Witcher. Yeah. The best part about Assassin's Creed, especially at first, the first couple games, I think, is you're really just kind of given a place to go, a person to kill, and the tools to do it. Yeah, they're they're like immersive sim games. Kind of like Thief, yeah. Yeah, yeah like Thief, Hitman, fucking uh, Splinter Cell. Yeah. And also, like, like, a bit of Dishonored in there, too. Yeah, yeah, a bit of that. And yeah, the, the series, I think, at its best was really when it was focusing on that. Yeah. I mean, well, the funny thing for me, I was playing one recently on the 360, classic experience, and, uh, and, and I was, like, remembering that Assassin's Creed 1 was, like, one of the big games that was, like, you gotta get a, an Xbox 360 or a PS3 for this game. Oh, yeah. It was, like, it was like that and, like, GTA 4. I remember we're like, bro, this is the next gen experience. You can't get this on PS2, oh, and man. and it's very quaint now because that game does not look even as good as Assassin's Creed 2 very much. But uh, you on know. it seriously, well, I think Assassin's Creed One looks better than Two. Two I, has like in, in weird ways, yes. I, it's like, a little bit like less detailed. I don't know. No, it's more detailed. In fact, uh, it, it's, it's more detailed because there's less shit in the game. <laughs> you know what? It might it might be because I was playing Assassin's Creed 2 on the PS4 release. That that'll and then I was yeah, playing the 360 version of the original. But do they even yeah. re like have a re-release of the original anywhere? The director's cut on PC. But the oh. Assassin's Creed one director's cut is on Good Old Game. Uh, uh yeah, we I'll recommend it on Good Old Games. <laughs> it's a uh... It, it's it's a great game. You should play it. Yeah, it's it's, not it's quite nice. You guys um, ever heard of Assassin's Creed? It's a good video game. Yeah. This, yeah. this episode is sponsored by Ubisoft, by the way. Not really. Yeah, we are we are we are we are only totally. sponsored by Cushy Dreams. We're only sponsored yeah. by Ubisoft for the first four, four minutes before we start shitting on the entire series. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's gonna happen soon. Yeah, it was the third biggest selling game on the PlayStation Three that year. It was. The original? Yeah, the original. I'm trying to find the 360 mm. one, but that's a little harder to find when it comes to software sales. But oh no, it's um it was number five on the 360 best selling games of 2007. Nice. Which you have oh, to yeah. think. I mean, two, 2007. Yeah, 2007 is like Halo 3 and everything. Oh, Halo yeah, 3, Halo the number orange one. box. Look, well, okay, yeah. so Ooh. on the top 10, I'm just going to list them out because. We gotta talk about how good 2007 was, in a way. Oh, 2007 yeah. was wasn't such that, a wasn't that, uh, year. Modern Warfare also? Yeah, Mo Modern Warfare 1, Guitar Hero 2, uh, Assassin's Creed, Bioshock 1, Crackdown, fucking Advanced Warfighter 2, Lost Planet 1. Those were the top, one of the top 10 games. I, I didn't count sports games, but... 2007 is like the year for Gen 7. Yeah, we 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 were eating so yeah, fucking they, good. They 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 the poor poor guys peaked two years into uh <laughs> into the consoles that they put out. Then it just coasted after that. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I, I get. Well, we got to the Connect so. era. So we got yeah. the Connect era. Remember Connect? Yeah. No. I try not to. They, they added a Connect thing for AC4, but it was just shouting out stuff to your crew. Finally, I can shout McDonald's to get a free McFlurry. McDonald's, skip ad. <laughs> God, that that was such an embarrassment. Classic. So, uh, I I actually recently replayed Assassin's Creed One. Oh yeah, which has kind of been why we've been talking about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. like uh, I started my replay uh, before we started with uh, the podcast, and I finished it like. A few episodes ago, I've been kind of I've I've been kind of waiting to do uh, two, because uh, last time I tried to replay all of the good ones, uh, I I got to I got through to Revelations and then I was like, wow, I hate I hate playing video games right now. Huh, huh. 
I never got to Revelations is the third one from two, right? Uh, yes. Yes. It is the third one in the two chronology. I only so, got um, to like a little so bit weird. into the second game. So for yeah. for for the, for all of you who don't know. Uh, Assassin's Creed has a number of titles. Assassin's Creed 1, 2, 3, and 4. However, there are games between those. There is, uh, after 2, there's Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, that, that continue the story of Ezio, but also additionally continue the main like overarching plot of the game, yeah. like the series. But they're not even really... They're basically yeah, so Assassin's they're Creed essentially, 3 and 4. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> So when we talk about the first four Assassin's Creed games, that's what we mean. And Assassin's Creed Three is basically Assassin's Creed Five. But I have like, to uh, say, like I'm, I've, I've mentioned before, Assassin's Creed Three was very disappointing. Uh, not for the gameplay or anything, but because when I was getting into two, I was realizing I kind of liked the whole story angle of like Desmond and everything, and then finding out that I mean, I guess spoilers all around, you yeah. know. It, it, three, they just like completely abandon that, and I, I don't know. It's really well, lame. So it's weird because they kind of haven't. It's well, yeah, he's time. like they, still they, an AI or some fucking shit. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's 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 quite strange. From what they want to have their cake and eat it too of not being an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. However, I I will yeah. say I personally believe that they they really fucked up on the gameplay side for Assassin's Creed Three. Yeah, but yeah, that's what everybody always says about it. Was well, also like, like trees everywhere. Yeah, but and the no setting of colonial America, like I'm yeah, sorry, the it's... fucking snooze fest concept. <laughs> yeah, like here, here's the I thing. Mean, it would be it's, a cool it's concept. It's just not good. It's for interesting a, from like the that. historical yeah. events aspect, yeah. but like but poor pe- climbing but... and parkour. Yeah, and shit. yeah. It made a bit of a... Here's the interesting thing. If that game it came out with the art in the RPG style of the later games, I it actually think that map would have been better. Yeah, probably, it probably yeah, would have yeah. been. The, the map like, would have so fit bad. so much better because you had like a reason to go hunting besides <laughs> just you know, oh hey look I'm getting an upgrade for my fucking dart belt. Yeah, Ooh. it's which which is such a weird concept and turnaround because then like one year later we get Assassin's Creed Four, which is it's I, I great. Think, I think coincidentally the best game, but it's like a total different experience for three. I don't yeah, know if it's I, the best. Four I, is I, already beginning to lead. Like, I started playing four, I was really yeah. enjoying it, and then it was already so, like, it felt padded and, like, I needed to grind. It's same thing with, like, the new games. Not to the same extent, yeah, no, but, yeah. like, two, the, the two, like, era before four doesn't really well, have that. The thing, so. the thing I'll say with, to defend four in a way, I, I think it does a lot of work to, like, I understand your criticism on it, and I kind of agree, but I think the game has a lot of charm and a lot of other aspects that really kind of make me overlook that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, was about, I was about to say, um, I actually personally disagree that it's that all that different from 3 gameplay-wise. In fact, it's, from what I remember, I haven't played, I haven't replayed 3 in a while, but from what I remember, it's exactly the same, except you have, like, different items and stuff. But... Yeah. They go through such lengths to make it a just a really good game that you can forgive those weird gameplay like decisions that three made. Yeah, okay. and I mean, it, even like my complaint, it's like again, it's nowhere near as bad as the later games like Odyssey or whatever, where it's like yeah. I have to grind ten hours to be able to get to this part of the map and not die immediately. Um, but there is a bit of that where it's like, oh, I can't fight this ship just because I need to, like, I don't know, its number is bigger. You know, they were already starting to get a little bit into the RPG thing, not quite as much, but, but yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. I know a lot of people, you know, that, that's one where I got a little, like, you know, bored with the gameplay before I finished it, but, you know, it, it definitely has, uh, it has a lot going for it. It's one of the few really good pirate games, like, yeah, you know, action so adventure pirate good. games. There are so few good pirate games, which and I, Assassin's Creed Four is one of them. I will yeah. also recommend to people because I've been playing through it and quite enjoying it. Rogue is really good. I wish they had released that instead of Unity on um, the time they released Unity and just delayed it a year. I'm yeah. gonna get to Rogue because I have yeah. opinions on that game and they're complicated. I, mm. I, I can understand where you're coming from. I just 
if you like if you if you enjoy playing Black Flag and you want more of Black Flag in a way, I, I will or, say specifically the gameplay of Black Flag. Yeah, the gameplay. Yeah, it's it's not storyized mm. Black Flag, but you're getting a lot. No, of the story content. is supposed to be like one of the better stories in the series, though, because I know For that it's Rogue? very different. I, yeah, actually, well, that that's the thing. I think it's only considered to be better because it's different. Yeah, because you're playing. But it's, it's also guy. it's also kind of not. We we can we can get to that because um, uh, I want to go ahead and continue. Uh, so yeah. I've been playing uh, one recently, and you know, I, everyone's like, you know, oh, one's so clunky. No, it isn't. Skill issue, actually. <laughs> okay, like I, uh, I, I mean that so in. I mean that in a kind way too. It's like you, you gotta you gotta be patient and learn how to do shit. You know, it's not yeah. just you know. Oh, I want to hold forward and then oh, and then I do the parkour. It's you know, you I gotta the look at the yeah. You gotta look at the placements of things. You gotta you know, <laughs> you gotta not. This was before Ubisoft games played themselves for you. You know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This is before back most Ubisoft games play themselves fuck. for you. Yeah. Rest in peace, Ubisoft's giving a fuck of a meter. Yeah. It, it, but, um, it's weird when it comes back, though, because it doesn't come back in games it should, you know? Yeah. It's very strange. Okay. Speaking of Ubisoft, I know this is unrelated, but we brought this game up a few times whenever we talk about Ubisoft. I was just in a game spot, uh, GameStop. I always confuse it with the fucking GameSpot. God damn it! I was in GameStop, and I saw a new copy of the Mar the new Mario and Rabbids game for like forty bucks. Yeah, and the thing is, it's a good game. It's just they didn't market it. They at all. did not sell that fucking game at all. And I have to reiterate <laughs> once again that Rayman is coming to that game. Actual real Rayman. Finally. Rayman is coming. Finally, Rayman is in a real game released after 2013. <laughs> it, it, yes. I, I mean, I'll say a real this. Real game nobody bought. The, the first game was really good. It was weirdly yeah. like... I mean, the, the last XCOM game they put out, if anyone remembers Chimera Squad, was not good. So I'll recommend picking up uh, Mario and Rabbids games, because... Hey. Well, I mean, that's, that's what, you know... I thought about when you're like Ubisoft, they can still like occasionally there are people at Ubisoft who care about making something good. Oh yeah, uh, there's and... people who made um the fractured bubble, the South Park game. They're they're trying to kill them all off. Oh yeah, <laughs> damn it, there's there's they're clinging to life, trying to rape them out of house and home. Uh, yeah, I I was gonna say more stick them in the Just Dance vines, but. Isn't Just Dance, like, they're not doing the yearly model anymore, they're still, becoming, they still, like, a live service? They still do, like, a yearly package, if that makes sense, where it's, like, you buy a disc, it comes with a certain amount of songs, but it's also, like, you can just play it digitally and purchase the songs, or download, mm. like, a season pass and get... That sounds well, dumb. Hopefully there's some cool Assassin's Creed-related DLC. Boom, brought it back. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so speaking of Assassin's Creed, yes. so um, I, I I do find that a lot of the time people complaining about the like the parkour and how slow things are in the first game just kind of I I don't know I just kind of feel like that that's not really being either it's not being fair to the game or it's not like it it comes from perspective of not wanting to improve and just wanting to press forward. Yeah. Well, is it that different from what it was in two? Because I don't remember. No, it being... two two literally just sped it up a little. Yeah, That's two, two uh, like smooth the animations out. I mean, it's still fairly like you know comfortably yeah, also, automated, but still with a degree of you know strategy needed in two. They also removed a move. Uh, so I learned about this recently, but in Assassin's Creed One, there is a sort of secret move that you can do, hmm. uh, where you can vault over like an object, and you do it. It's so tricky to pull off but you hold you like when you're running when you reach something that you want to vault over uh usually like a like a you know uh, like a beam that's sticking out or yeah. like a fence then you hold b while um i believe also holding a you hold a and b at the same time yeah. and then altair just vaults over it this was like, the uh, white they, they don't... video right huh 
There was a video I think that I saw recently that that mentioned that. Now that you now that you've mentioned it, I'm like, yeah, that that sounds familiar. Yeah, I I, I forgot the, the the creator of the video who's uh, who's that I watched to yeah. uh, to that you know that taught yeah, me this. It's probably the same guy. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's 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 interesting. I don't yeah, know. The game, I, I never the heard game that people... doesn't the game doesn't tell you about it. The the thing that I always heard was that the combat was clunky, but like going back and playing it, it's not. Oh. Not yeah. really. It's, it's see, yeah, again the same as two. It's, 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 it's just, fine. Well, no, no, it's not quite the same as two. They changed cool, the combat different. a lot more going to, going up to two. Uh, but it, like, it, it plays kind of similarly, you know. It's it does play similarly, but uh, closer like to that the, uh, than the newer games. Yeah, the uh, the the windows for counters are a lot smaller in the first game. And mm-hmm. also, you can use the hidden blade in combat in the second game in a way that isn't just countering every enemy with a one-hit kill, which is very satisfying, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That's how I killed the uh, the last uh, the last guy in uh, <laughs> the, the 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 last last guy in uh, the first game. I, I just kind of baited him into uh, into you know, slashing me with his little sword, and <laughs> no no thank you, buddy. Here's some hidden blade to the face. Mm-hmm. I love Assassin's Creed One. I, I'm, the, I'm also uh, surprised they haven't like, tried doing a remake of it. You know, given the given the way that the uh, the gaming industry currently is, yes, I am absolutely shocked that they haven't done anything like that. Yeah, it's like it would have made them easy money. I oh, would yeah. say that there's no need to do a remake of a game from 2007, but then there's not really much of a need to do a remake of Resident Evil Four either. And they sure yeah, did. yeah. Hey, it, I mean, admittedly, good. It, it good. It, it, admittedly, uh, yeah. it was good. Yeah. yeah, which is more than you can say about a lot of, you know, <laughs> you know, it's more than you can say about the Resident Evil Three remake. Although we're getting, uh, we're getting into some uh, different, different diaper yeah. type, type of So, um, I do, I do want to like talk a little bit about how there used to be a lot of like biblical stuff in Assassin's Creed, and that's just all gone now. Yeah. They, like even even it's in taken two, a real big back, Steve. Yeah, like the the whole Templar thing is that they're basically like LARPing as, oh yes, we're a secret order of the, the Catholics or whatever. Yeah. Where even even like in the modern day, the Templars have this kind of shade of like kind of Freemasons. Yeah. Like they're not specifically religious, but like they they even like like in some of the. Uh, the writings that you find in the first game, you can see them specifically like clown, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, on religion. <laughs> and like some of the uh, the Templar targets in the first game, specific, actually, I think most of them specifically say that they don't believe in God, even though they're like crusaders and shit. Take that, atheists. <laughs> Checkmate atheism. I do think that that element of the story, it sucks that it's gone. Or it was interesting, lessened. you know? Yeah, like, I think the mythology angle is cool, like, that they kind of introduced in 2 and started going for a little bit more uh, as things went on. But when you started to fight, like, the actual fucking Minotaur, yeah, like, buddy, say, chill. Get, like, Cyclops and shit. And yeah. That one game. It, it got a little absurd. And they don't even because... let you ride a sphinx in in in, uh, in Origins. Yeah, like... which which would have I mean if you could ride like mythological animals, that'd be kind of cool. But it's also kind of like completely not... out of the context of the series. Yeah, it's not exactly Assassin's Creed. It would be really really nice if it was like a Al- different series. Although, admittedly, I did like um, if you guys played the DLC for uh, Assassin's Creed Three. The Tyranny of King Washington DLC. That's yes, something that nobody brings we'll, up. We'll get to that in a sec because it's it fucks. It is the best part of uh, Assassin's Creed Three. It's oh, literally so, the only um, reason to play Assassin's Creed Three in my mind. Oh yeah. So Assassin's Creed One. I also there's there's one thing that I really want to touch on that isn't uh, Lucy Stillman. That isn't. <laughs> oh yeah. That that isn't um like really talked about that much, or I guess it's specifically talked against. Yeah, people hate the kingdom, like the the area between all of the cities. It's honestly not that bad. 
Oh yeah, the kingdom was fine. Like every everyone, everyone's like, oh, you know, I want to. It oh, was. It wasn't get to the great, cities. but it wasn't. I like. Yeah, I understand why they want to get to the cities. It's fine, but it's the kingdom itself embraces the social stealth more than anywhere else in the game because you can run around in the city and you know knock pots over and stuff and you can get away with that basically until the very end of the game where yeah. you know security gets kind of tight but like you have to be careful in the kingdom and also it doesn't happen the like them the, like sussing out that you're an assassin and attacking you doesn't happen as often as people think yeah. like everyone's Ooh. just like oh every single time i go into the kingdom they're always immediately after me which no they're not uh, even even when you have like the high alert kind of deal going on, where it's like beeping and it's really annoying, all you really have to do is just not like hold the high profile button <laughs> or get too close to the uh, to the soldiers that are patrolling, which are pretty obvious, you know, obviously there. And then if you do get close to the soldiers patrolling because you have to go through like a mountain pass, you just hold the blend key, and then once you're done with that, once you're like you know. Once you're past them, you can just keep on going as usual. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I remember the the kingdom that much from my time playing it. I don't think I yeah. got that far necessarily. I remember getting all. Well, the I mean, first it's it's literally immediately as you go out to do to do your first assassination. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I didn't yeah. play much of it. It was one of those things where it's like, I, I you know. It's a little uh, bit of a pain in the ass, but it's also yeah, not, I, a, not as bad as everyone made it out to be. I understand why people are upset with it, because it can get annoying. Yeah. However, it frequently isn't annoying. You know? Yeah, pe people flip out on small shit, I think. You know? Yeah. And then in 2, they just made it like a menu that you choose your city from, or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Although I, I guess they have a little bit of that uh, in like Forley. And, yeah, there's uh, like the little mountain Tuscany. passes and stuff. Yeah, like that's that's fun and cool, but like you don't really get too much of that, which mm -hmm. I think is a real shame because if you go and walk around the kingdom, like actually like explore, there are like little towns, and like you can you just kind of walk around in them, and yeah, there are there are soldiers pretty you know they're dotted around everywhere, but. You can walk around and explore this little small town. Uh, I actually, uh, I actually completed, uh, one hundred percent completed Assassin's Creed during the, uh, like during the playthrough that I most recently did. Oh, and sure. yeah, I got all the right. flags, all the Templars, all the side objectives, like rescuing the citizens. Mostly just because I realized I hadn't done it before, and I was like, eh, this game's small enough. <laughs> like, yeah, and, why not, while I'm here. Yeah, I mean, a 100, 100 flags for each city sounds like a lot, but you can only get them 33 at a time, because that's how the, uh, the districts open up. And 33 across 9 districts, and then Pretty 100, good. For the, 100 for the kingdom, which you can only get a few like at each time because they lock off certain parts of it. Yeah. Like it's it's manageable, especially compared to the the later games. Oh god, mm. yeah. I remember Where getting you... some of those feathers in too, but but yeah, they were the... like they don't look visually I yeah. Like oh, they god. don't stand out. They're just dark and they're tiny and it, mm. like yeah, miserable. Yeah. The the feathers in Assassin's Creed 2 suck. Uh they're not so bad in Brotherhood because they're marked on the map. But you you have stuff like, you know, the 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 treasures in Assassin's Creed 4 where Oh god, yeah. where you have to go to every single tiny little uncharted island and pick up a treasure chest that's going to contain like 20 bucks and maybe it's... a cookie for your hard work. Oh, that's being generous of what those actually had though. Those didn't have shit. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why the one fucking game I've ever 100%ed. Well, I think I 100%ed Bully, like on the PS2. Yeah, but then nice. more recently was Spider Man PS4 because the, oh, they don't have like a billion little collectibles you need to get. That's the problem with like 
you know, you say like, oh, at least they put this or that on the map. Well, yeah, then it's like another thing on your Ubisoft checklist. Well, but, but that's gotta, fair. But yeah. here's the thing you know. I'll say with with uh, Spider Man 2018. That game is really good about making those collectibles one fun to get, and two like in places that don't feel tedious, that actually feel like something that you could get too easily and want to do and want. Yeah, to a lot of the a lot of the Assassin's Creed two like feather stuff that I was finding was like, I don't know, just in very strange spots. Like, yeah. But like it, I played a lot of that game and I finished it. And I, I, I you know I, play, I played like a lot of side missions and I still basically did not find a lot of those. I was uh I was playing through because I got uh I played through like the first couple of uh, memories of uh, Assassin's Creed Two, yeah. and I got all of the, I got all of the feathers in the area that I uh, that you start out in, and there's yeah. one just kind of chilling on a windowsill, just a random windowsill. Yeah. Facing facing away from the street where you would normally be like on. It's just a windowsill that you just have to intuit that, oh hey, there's a feather there. Because you can't fucking see the feathers. <laughs> Fuck mm. it, we're going on to Assassin's Creed 2. <laughs> yeah. Fuck those feathers. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh Claw, do you know the reward for getting all of the feathers? Uh doesn't your sister give you a hug or some shit? No, it's not. It's it's not weird like that. All right, so um, you know the notoriety system, right? Yeah, so like you know you you do you know illegal shit and the little meter fills up, and then when that gets to a hundred, guards are like super duper aware of you. So, yeah. and then you can do stuff like you know taking down wanted posters to like attract attention to to take attention away from yourself rather. So. Your reward for getting 100 feathers is a cape that sets your notoriety to constantly be at 100%. Huh. Yeah, it's actively, like, bad for you. And it sucks, because I like the way it looks. The Auditory Family Crest is cool as hell. I mean... Yeah, the cape makes everyone look at you and just be like, oh, that asshole, he's getting the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill this dude. I mean, that's a... He that's wore the wrong a, colors in our neighborhood. That's a decent thing for 100 percent though of the of that. Like, okay, you want to be an asshole? You want to get all these stupid feathers? Here you go, <laughs> Nickhead. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess so. Which, hey, respect, you know. Yeah, um, in um, in Brotherhood, you get the same reward for getting 10 feathers, except your notoriety is now permanently at zero percent, which I think is better. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it doesn't make much sense in the war because uh, you know, minor spoiler alert for Assassin's Creed Two for anyone who doesn't want to listen. Uh, at the very beginning, the Ezio, oh, the 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 Ezio family, the Auditory family that Ezio, your main character, is a part of, is like framed for treason, I believe. Thanks. And so. essentially, you're a wanted man from the start. So it does make sense that the the cape in question would make you constantly notorious, but also yeah. it's better as a reward to have it be constantly like you know completely anonymous. I mean, on the other hand, if you're gonna play the game for any reason, once you've collected all that shit, you probably want to just like cause run, chaos and yeah, run, just around run around and, and kill all the guards. That's yeah, it. Yeah. you can always fuck around and just. You know, if you want to play a playthrough where you're just constantly on edge, you could do that. Well, that could be fun. You can't really because, uh, like, you can you can't replay memories. Uh, I believe in oh. two. Yeah, I think so. Fuck. Like yeah, you're right. one of one of one of the games had that issue where you couldn't replay memories, and it wasn't one because in one you could replay memories. Huh. It was it was one of those games, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't Brotherhood or Revelations, because you know, those those added the uh, the hundred percent sync options yeah. where you could where you could fulfill certain criteria and get a, a bonus. I forgot what it, the reward is for hundred percent sync. I'm not sure, but I'd have to look into it. Probably probably something stupid. Now I kind of want to replay too. Now that we've been talking about it. Oh yeah, um, I'm probably gonna play it sometime. 
probably consider, um, you know, continuing the second two, because uh, I was enjoying that. I also would one day love for us to get Unity and do the co-op stuff all the way through. Listen, if it ever gets patched in a way that it, it doesn't risk blue screening my fucking computer, sure. I, I think if it... only you had it on PS4, because I think I have it on there. Yeah, it, well, it's on um, the, the PlayStation Plus thing. I played a little bit of uh, Unity, because Unity is one of the last games that's like a, a normal Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Uh, because there was also the one I really wanted to to like was Syndicate, and I never played it because under I understand it's terrible and and everybody doesn't like it. But you got like a cool grappling hook thing, and it's like old timey Sherlock Holmes England or whatever. It seems like a great fit. But, yeah. Uh, no, kind of a mess. Uh, and 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 uh, Unity is like also kind of a giant mess. There's a lot of glitches in Unity. Uh, a lot of it has yeah. been patched, but there's still some. Some bugginess. Yeah, like specifically, I've heard from several, several, several different people that it is still basically completely broken on PC. And I wouldn't doubt it because Ubisoft is one of the. Uh, I could do that actually. Really uh, I'm yeah. doing that right now. Is what I like. I'm checking it right, right now. <laughs> You're good. But um, U- Ubisoft strikes me as one of those companies that just doesn't give a shit about PC gaming. They, yeah. they're kind of okay. Oh, but they have their super cool uh, launcher that they have, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh you know, I, I, that that is one of the criteria uh, for not giving a shit about the PC <laughs> game, in my opinion. Yeah. So far, it seems like some people are saying it doesn't work, but other people are saying it's working fine. Uh, so it's all right. It's one of those. Yeah, it works. Works fine on my machine. <laughs> uh, someone did say game takes place in France. I don't recommend. <laughs> That is that is fair. Incredibly true. true. Uh, You know, this takes place around the same time as three, and I will say this: the game is better than three. Yeah, it it is infinitely more interesting, at least. Yep. And and they did, I believe, like tons of actual like scans. Well, another thing that's weird. Another thing that's weird about Unity is the main character. Looks like Ezio and Desmond, but yeah. it, he—I don't think he's related to any of that because yeah, it's, it's after a, it's, three. It's um Arno Dorian. Yeah, but he looks almost identical to the other guys in the series who I think he's not related to. So I don't know what's up with that. Doesn't Altair look the same too? It, yeah, it's Altair, like a well, genetic line it, thing. Yeah, he does in Assassin's Creed One, which makes he doesn't in um. He doesn't in Revelations, which that personally makes me think that that's like that's an animus thing. I think so, in a way. Because it's meant well, to be like, oh, hey, look, this is you. Speaking of the animus, like, what what's the deal with like with the lore? You know, um, in in which form? Like, you're talking right now? Well, I mean, like, just you know. For the for the podcast, uh, like yeah. a brief overview, idiot's guide to the Assassin's Creed lore, you know. Uh yeah, I'll let Tristan take this one up because I can't fully remember the beginning of how it was created. Okay, the so the very sci-fi beginning, machines. Yeah. Essentially, yes. So, um, once upon a time, <laughs> uh, so essentially, it started with sort of a political sort of. Well, I guess not exactly political, but sort of like a doomsday thriller kind of plot where, oh, you know, we have this uh, satellite that Abstergo is going to launch. Abstergo being, you know, the big bad company with uh, the Templars are heading up. But um, it starts with that. uh, Essentially, they're going to launch a satellite on a certain date on a certain date. And uh, that kind of expands to uh, also the... Uh, the old gods, the real ass old gods, are gonna come back during that day, also, and like Absolutely. a solar flare is gonna fuck up the world, and uh, only you can stop it. Desmond Miles looks to camera at the guy fucking in the animus. Can, can we talk about the date also? Because it's uh, it's a hilarious date. December twenty first, twenty twelve, aka that day. Yeah, you know. 
They even, I believe, the Mayan released, calendar day. They release Assassin's Creed Three on that day. Also, I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Which, boy, remember when people actually? There are people who actually thought that was going to be something. Yeah, but, like literally, the only thing that happened is the Mayan calendar went into the thirteenth of October. That's it. Yep. <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah, but it is a good marketing tactic to sell your game with. Oh yeah, well, like it, well, it, was, it was fun. In a way, smart. yes, but you also take the coin dice of it being real, and well, guess what? <laughs> Nobody's gonna play your game. You're all dead. Well, I mean, it, it, I guess at that point it wouldn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> but just like imagine being like the last guy who survived, and your idea was, "Hey, let's release this game on the day the world should end." <laughs> like that's a good just... that's a good plot for a story right there. You know that that should be the plot for uh, Twilight Lion Zone. Legend. Yeah. <laughs> I made the last Assassin's Creed. That's why the world's over. Yep. The world saw my my design decisions and said, "Yep. Time to end it." They 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 saw me simplifying the parkour and said, "Okay, yeah, push the button." Yep. Plunge it into the sun. So um I I guess to uh to sort of expand on that. Yeah. Uh there are these uh items called pieces of Eden. And it's it started out just being the apple and the holy grail, and I think the Turin shroud, and yes. it it expanded to like the Pope's staff, uh, uh, the spear that the hidden blade is made out of. Yeah, there's also uh, the spear. Fucking I think the spear discs. That, well, the spear that pierced Jesus, I think, is one of them too. Yeah, the uh, the spear of Longinus. I think yeah. the Nazis took that one. So hey, that's that's some real Ew. life lore. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, and if you ever wanted a Da Vinci Code video game, then you got it. Yep. Yeah, it, at the very least, the first view. And then it then it kind of loses itself after a bit. Yeah, it starts to go a bit funny. Well, I was saying earlier that 3 was a disappointment, and I haven't even played much of 3. Uh, I know everybody hates the gameplay, but it's a disappointment for me because right from when I realized what the story of the series was and, like, the lore, I was like, okay, I know this is... I know people have said this is dumb, but I really just wanted a modern-day Assassin's Creed where you're Desmond Miles and you're, like, jumping around in fucking New York like it's a Spider-Man game. Yeah, a lot of you people know? wanted that. But then everybody's like, oh, bro, just play Watch Dogs. I'm like, I don't want to play Watch Dogs. That's gay. Yeah, Watch Dog is stupid and also <laughs> bad. Yeah. And 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 what's-his-name's hat is not iconic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, no, but they... Because uh, they, that's kind of what they were setting up with, like, 2 and everything, is like, oh, you will... You have... That's the whole plot of it, kind of, is yeah, you have to that, relive... that is exactly the plot of it. You have to relive your ancestors' shit so that you can become an assassin and fight the Templars or whatever, but then they just drop that, and I, I guess they realized that, like, they wouldn't have... They didn't want to have an end to the series. They didn't want the actual... Yeah. I think that is just money took over, like, art, you know? Yeah. It was gonna... It had a plot, it had the, somewhere um, it was going. The director of the games left during, uh during the development of Assassin's Creed Revelations, if that tells you anything. Yeah, that that would be it. And the thing is, That's like, a even in 3, they were still kind of, it felt like they were setting that up, because there's a couple missions where in, like, modern day where you're moving around as Desmond. Yeah. They, they yeah, sure I mean, on. they had stuff like that in 2 as well, where you had to, like, do the training course or whatever. Yeah, and then in the end, you got to kill a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Man, it's, it's always was strange to me that that was the path they took, and also that they could do, like I remember in four, what is it? You're like a, a first person, yeah, you're, you're person a... working at Abstergo, right? Yeah, you're a yeah. silent protagonist. Yeah. So people just kind of emote to you, I mean, admittedly, like most game developers, you just silently nod at them and walk away. <laughs> yeah. It it, it 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 captures the reality of working in a game development studio. Yep. Gee, I wonder where they got their ideas from. Mm. You write what you know, and it really doesn't have to feel like work, then, does it? 
Yeah. Well, well it does when you're getting horribly back. crunched. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah they get yeah. fucked over constantly. But, yeah. Um, do, you, do you want to start talking I'm... about Assassin's Creed 3? Um, well, let's let's go through Brotherhood and Revelations real quick. Oh, yeah, just some yeah. Just some little pointers, because those are essential to the plot. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Assassin's Creed 2 ends, uh, minor spoilers, it's not really going to affect your enjoyment of the game if you decide to go through these games. By the way, go through these games in release order, for the love of God. Um, it, 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 Assassin's Creed 2 ends with the, uh, the, the plucky uh, hero assassin group going on the run because the Templars found them. And yeah. Assassin's Creed uh, Brotherhood starts off immediately after that. Where uh, you're playing, you know, you, you continue your memories as Desmond in the car ride over to the secret area. Uh, and then, immediately after, uh, you know, you play your, through your first memory as uh, Ezio. I'm yeah. sorry, I, 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 might, I, might be, I might be getting my names mixed up. The, uh, the you know, the, the, the silly plant has got my brain a little slow. Oh, um, uh, what's his name? Ezio, Ezio. Yeah, Ezio. So, um, yeah, we're we're playing through. We're, you you pl- you play through your first memory as Ezio in the car ride over to like the secret area, and uh, something happens, and that specific thing that happens makes the next bit in the uh, in the modern day setting really really resonant because you go to an area that you previously visited in a memory, and see how it is in the modern day. I think that aspect is really cool. Yeah. But then, um, in like interspersed throughout the uh throughout the story oh i know it's what like, you're talking about now actually yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really moment. cool and yeah, I'm, like I'm that's really, that's like I'm, a that's like something that only a game like assassin's creed could do and it's yeah. a shame that they didn't do more things like that you know i guess i guess like some games could do it across series like yeah. uh, Fallout could do it. Yeah, I guess so. But it, it is interesting Elder that it's like a real world location too. I mean, that was yes. always one of the big elements of the game, and one of the things people still really like about these games is that they they do have a lot of like historical, you know, learning elements that you can you can. I, I think there's even like kind of a uh, an educational mode in like uh, uh, Origins or in something. In some of the later ones, including Valhalla, they've included like discovery tours within the yeah. game it's which is probably yeah. undercut a little bit the, by um, the having the ability to fight minotaurs and shit but... yeah <laughs> yeah but it's a se- it's a separate thing though which is nice assassin's creed is starting with assassin's creed 2 and going on through at least through to revelations uh you can access like a data file in the animus like telling you historical facts about stuff and it's really cool oh yeah but um what was I saying? Okay, so um, in Revelations, um, interspersed throughout the plot, you get to like go outside and explore this area, which is so cool because you can just play as Desmond, just whenever you feel like it. Yeah. So at the end of that plot, uh, there's a big, a uh, big thing that happens, and uh, for reasons that are best left not spoiled, uh, Desmond is kind of like put in the Animus for like a long time. And yeah. that's where uh, Revelation starts up, where you play as like the the next third of Ezio's life, and he's like this old guy in Constantinople. <laughs> you know, he's just handing out Werther's yeah, Werther's yeah. originals, like they're. <laughs> <laughs> but in, instead of Werther's originals, they're actually bombs. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's weird but, seeing um, like an old assassin, though. It, it feels wrong. Yeah. Supposed to die young. Yep. So, uh, spe- speaking of old assassins, uh, in Revelations, you actually get to uh, view more of Altair's life from the first game. And I think that's really cool, because Altair wasn't really explored too much, other than just kind of being kind of an asshole at the start, and then not being an asshole at the end, you know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that was something they were focusing on as much at that point, so I guess it makes sense. Yeah, but, but it was nice to kind of send the character off and just yeah, yeah. Get, get a good ending. Hell yeah, but um, it, it's 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 just cool to see him again. E- either way, 
but um, you you kind of get more uh, explanation as to what happened with him, and also uh, sort of kind of closure for Ezio. You get uh, more closure if you watch the Assassin's Creed Embers uh, short short movie. Oh mm. yeah. Uh, also, there is a uh, there's a movie I think or like mini series that you can watch um, that takes place before Assassin's Creed Two called Assassin's Creed Lineage. I haven't watched that yet. Uh, I probably should. Are, but are um, we ever, are we like, talking about the movie at all? Yeah, I was just gonna say it's, it, that doesn't come till later. But but yeah, I don't it's... I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. I haven't watched it. I don't want to think about it. I, I have <laughs> seen it. Uh, can I? Do you just want me to give a quick review of it, real quick? Just not uh, it. do it in ten words or less. Go. Ten, oh, ten, um, <laughs> Fossbender tries his best. Um, movie around him sucks balls. There we go. Ten words or less. Nice. That's nine nine words. words. Hell yeah. It. Yep. I, I was really trying there. Yeah, my, Michael Fossbender. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> I've liked him in a few things. Yep. So, Huge um, talk. My, my yeah, that's that's why they call him Assbender. <laughs> that's the reason why he's playing bender. Magneto. Yeah, the control for Rod. Right. Nice. I'm, I'm going to hell. Fuck. All right, so um, where, where fuck where was I? Assassin's Creed Revelations. So um, you you get a lot more background on Desmond through that game because he's like in the Animus, and you have yeah. him like go through his old memories because he's in the Animus and the Animus can just do that with memories and shit. It's cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, so um, with Brotherhood, it introduces the, uh, you know, the obvious given the name uh, mechanic of you training up like a squad of assassins kind of expanding the Brotherhood and it eventually ends with you being like the master dude i love outer heaven <laughs> it is essentially outer heaven it, it wow. is yeah right and it's also like before you know before everything turns bad for the assassins and unity it's it's weird yeah it's just yeah you know, you're just building them up but um there's also the uh obvious uh difference that uh brotherhood takes place just in rome in one single city. You you go to other cities for like missions, like single missions, but it's like a solid 90% of the game takes place just in Rome. And that's yeah. really cool because Rome's a big place. And they have a big portion of countryside as well. Oh shit. Sorry I had to head to mute for a sec. But there, there's a large portion of the countryside. You can you can be, you know, exploring the fucking the Capitoline Hill one second and then take a tunnel. You're all the way over here, like behind the Colosseum. And it's just planes as far as you can see. It's really cool. And uh, Revelations does kind of the same thing. I just think um, personally, Constantinople isn't quite as varied as Rome. So you because it's mostly just city. You know, you don't have any, like, you know, countryside with it. But either way, all four of the games that um, that we've that have been covered so far through the, uh, the chronology, Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, all four of those are great games. Yeah. Like, they're, they're just great. Uh, let's talk about a not great game. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Assassin's Creed 3 starts off directly after Assassin's Creed Revelations. You play as, uh, obviously, Desmond the Miles at the very beginning. And, you know, interspersed throughout. But you also play as, um... I want to make a genuine effort at pronouncing his name. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not good with... I'm not good with names in general, so... I'm not going to try that one. So, uh, his, uh... Man, I I can't I can't pronounce this. Yeah. These I don't know these letters. Like we can, okay, we just so like call him Connor. We're 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 dumb. Yeah, Americans. colloquially only known as Connor Kenway, but like, uh, the, the, like 
And he's not related to the Kenway from the other game, right? He is yeah, his he grandson. Is. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to listen to this and then um, I can't Try your best. It. I can't listen to it. Oh, I'm, I'm great. Trying to find a pronunciation guide real quick. But um I think it's it, I I I I'm deciphering like the weird Wikipedia pronunciation like words and there's just an epsilon in there. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> so like I I'm guessing it's Radana Ketan. Reketo. Radana Ketan. Radon Hageto. I don't know. His tribe says Radun Hagadun. But Connor is asked his name in English and always responds Radon Hakatan. Radon Hakatan. Yeah, it is a genuine Native American name, which is really cool. But, (laughs) good lord. I. I, We we butchered it. Yeah, like, reading it out loud as it is, like, you know alphabetically mm-hmm. is if if you don't know any you know native american languages you're going to butcher it um yeah. reading it out with the wikipedia pronunciation type of thing it is i don't like i don't know what the little squiggly thing over the u means <laughs> all i know is the two dots because it makes a smiley face and it's ooh. <laughs> exactly that's all you need like there's a squiggly line there's a little like a little down arrow over the epsilon because there's a fucking epsilon yeah <laughs> we uh, do Wikipedia stuff anyway did the, the, the uh the Canadians Canadians use a lot of epsilons I didn't know no 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 it, it, that's the pronunciation alright okay I'll, 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 I'll just copy this Copy this and paste it so you can see. Like the that that first bit is his uh is his name like written out. The the second one is his is the pronunciation that uh, that Wikipedia and the Assassin's Creed wiki give. <laughs> yeah, like it's like. <laughs> I, I I always feel like I'm being disrespectful when I say that I can't pronounce this shit, but seriously, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, I, I'm bad with difficult. I'm bad with like what would be just traditional like American names. So there was this I'm fucking this. there was a native clan that was like near me at one point, and their name was spelled like Sekwepemk, and then I learned later that it's it's pronounced Shwepmik or something like that. Yeah. Like just entirely different letters. Yeah. Oh, just happens. Like, yeah. We're, we're trying. I think when that's I, more on how we then... phoneticize things. So. Yeah. I yeah. guess so. English, yeah. English phoneticism is fucking weird. Oh, Especially absolutely. When you think like whenever like whenever we have to translate things to Japanese, we have to like if there's any rhyming scheme, we have to just say what it is because Japanese rhymes so easily. <laughs> yeah. It's like speaking of speaking of Japanese, how about how we'll never get a a, a real Jap, uh, like Japanese ninja Assassin's Creed game? I, I thought I mean, one was announced. Even there, there's one set in Japan, but it's I, I don't think they're isn't gonna it be like a side ninja. scroller or some shit. Well, no, no, I that think was, that was China. That it was oh. China, but one of them is supposedly set in ancient, like not in ancient Japan, but like sort of like the nineteen, like not the nineteen hundreds, but like the eighteen hundreds. And, uh, okay, I think what okay, it was okay, was the the guy who was like running the series. He like people wanted Japan for years, and he was like, "No, Japan is stupid." And then Ghost of Tsushima came out, and it was just an Assassin's Creed game in Japan. Yeah, but like a good one. Uh, and the, good one now, they're, <laughs> but, but, now they're like, "Hey, but there's, there are some people pissed because the rumor is it's going to be um, Freedom Cry's protagonist in Japan." Oh, Aveline's fun. Oh wait, no, free, free yeah, wasn't free. Yeah, um, Aveline's Freedom Cry. No, Aveline uh, is um, Aveline is the PS Vita game Liberation. So, so, so the, Freedom the, Cry the would be Freedom... Adewale then. Yeah, Adewale. Yeah, he's Adewale is a fucking baller. Hell yeah, I yeah, want it's... Adewale in Japan. People were like, <laughs> oh, why isn't a Japanese protagonist? I'm like, 
Well, Japan, like, I've heard nothing connected to the Assassin's Order in the series. Like, Well, there are, there are a few, like, um, there's, like, uh, at the very end of Assassin's Creed 1, for those of you who don't know, um, you see a whole bunch of, like, symbols and shit, like, written all over the area that you're in. Yeah. And some of them point to Japan. There are also, like, different, like, there, there are a lot of different things that sort of point to Japan being, like, you know, at least yeah. somewhere that assassins and Templars are. But there hasn't been anything, like, focused around Japan, you know. Yeah, it's like, I, at I'm, least to my knowledge. I'm excited, although it's a part of this Assassin's Creed, um, let me find the name of it, Infinity, I think. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Infinity. Uh, yeah, one of the 40 games that's coming out, yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. there, um, was there one set in India ever? Because that seems there, there like... Yeah, there was, like, there was, yeah, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Chronicles games are, they're kind of a... They're a throwback to the old school yeah. Prince of Persia games. Well, uh, yeah, guess, in a way. they're 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 also kind of an extension of the uh, of uh, the uh, the DS game Altair's Chronicles. Yeah, kind of kind Ooh, of an extension cool. of that. But um, I about that one. There's Russia, China, and India. Um, also something I just learned while I was reading here. Apparently, uh, Netflix is doing a live action Assassin's Creed series. Huh. Right. Yep. Oh, it isn't like the movie, then that's cool. <laughs> the movie tried to tell the like story from the original games, right? Desmond it, and everything. Well, no, it, it's it's kind of a side story to what was going on at the time. Interesting. So if they do the Netflix show, it might be just trying to do like. I mean, I'm all for the idea of them actually finishing the fucking plot and not just abandoning it when they get to three. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. All right, so um, real quick, we're gonna get back to uh to our Assassin's Creed discussion in a bit, but uh, we're coming up on an hour. Yes, let me uh, let me. Oh, get... we should do the thing. Oh yeah. So All right. so um so so uh, I'm I'm not gonna smoke this time <laughs> because I'm 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 gonna take a little bit of a tolerance break. Understand. Uh, because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna partake once more uh, either Friday or Saturday. Mm. But right. it was uh, quite nice. So let's go ahead and... Cushy Dreams is the finest in legal cannabis. That's, you know, stuff like smokable Delta 8, got the CBD flower, and they they actually have these pre-rolls. So I, um, I have a question. They don't, hang on, don't they have something, a sequel to Delta 8 called Delta 9 now or something? Yes, they, do. they have those in gummies. They have that. Guys, get on it! Yeah, it's, it's even yeah. better than Delta 8. This is pretty much... The kind of quality of stuff you get at a dispensary. They're really yeah. Cool. And I will say their pre rolls are packed tight. Like, they, they are, are quite nice. Nice. Like, you, nothing's coming out of those until you smoke it. No, no Scooby also, snacks or anything. It, it's good shit. Yeah. Also, the half grams come in this cool little case. I really okay. like it. It's like a it's but, like a um, futuristic like little wallet for your thing. It's good shit. So, um, talking about gummies and the sequel to Delta A, they got them. Oh. They got uh they they contain the same active type of THC, uh that you know the 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 same type of thing that they only sell at dispensaries. The good shit. Oh, yeah. they are euphoric and delicious. So and uh let, let's some tasty let's, flavors. Yeah, let's talk about some flavors. Uh, you like strawberry? You like sour watermelon? Listen, I know you. You listening right now? Mm-hmm. You're a green mm-hmm. apple guy slash girl slash prefer not to say. Ooh. Yeah. I am too. Green apple's great, and uh, we actually got some tangerine here. I'm holding the tan- them right the tangerine now. Tangerine ones are delicious. I will. I can attest. Them. I can attest. They are. They taste good. I have to keep them away from myself <laughs> because because yeah, they don't. I, they don't taste like you know. Yeah. Edible, no aftertaste. Taste, which I am so the, fucking. The, the only <laughs> the only aftertaste when I take those I get is the aftertaste of tangerine. Yeah. Which oh. Is- Good so, dentist. you know, I, I keep myself away from these because, you know, they're 10 milligrams, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bitch. I have low tolerance. <laughs> uh, but if you're if you're, you know, a real man, a real you know, woman, a real prefer not to say <laughs> uh, they have extra strength, 1000 milligrams. Delta oh, that's, for me. that's basically a I mean, gram. 
I it's need that. The Delta Eight THC gummies, and they're they're part of the limited edition Artist series, and they come in blue raspberry, which, by the way, my favorite fruit flavor. Oh yeah. And uh, other other flavors, like they got peach, pineapple. Like, when's the last time you've heard of a blackberry gummy? I have. Oh, that's great. Right. But well, that's they really have cool. them. They have them. You can you can try them right now. Now I'll so, say um, the, the the Delta Nine, the the ones that are the ten the ten grams. I have oh, a very high enough. tolerance. That's probably more than enough for most people. But <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> if you want to have a good whole weekend, like you, you take oh, a couple yeah. of those and have a good whole weekend, try that extra strength. Yeah, the um, I, the the one thousand milligram would put me on my ass. Oh yeah, that, that will that I would will probably, down. Me. I would love every second of it. Now, of so course, um. Everything, of course, with Cushy Dreams is federally legal in the United States. Of course, you got to be 21 years or older. And yes, sadly, don't... for Canadian <laughs> listeners, you got to be in the United States. My, my boys, my boys out there in Zambia, I'm so sorry. Yep. So, sorry to, um, you know, Djibouti, Japan, um, South Korea, North Korea. We can't really. West those Korea. Words. Sorry course, about those Korea. guys, too. Big ups no, to East Korea. East Korea has a lot of problems with slavers. No. You don't want to deal with them. Uh, now, listen, now, listen, if you if you live in Florida, while you may technically be a different in a different country than the United States, it's also <laughs> you, you can get them there, too. Yeah, you can get them there, too. Even in Ohio, we, we Even disown Ohio. you. We disown you as a state, Florida. But. Hey, but Cushy ahead. Dreams doesn't. Yeah, Cushy, Cushy, Cushy Dreams, Dreams will still hook you up. So, um, I mean, yeah. You, so all of this sounds great, right? Well, guess what? You can get twenty five percent off of your next order. Uh, how how do you how do you think they are able to do that, Bane? Ah, uh, you know, I I think it's because they they think our listeners will really like it, and so far, seems like our listeners do. Yeah, you're gonna want to go to cushydreams.com. That's K U S H Y dreams.com. No spaces, no slashes, no hyphens, no exclamation marks. You just press Press cushydreams.com. Goblin, sorry. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, just make sure because, you know, we we respect you. We want you to get the best deal possible. When you go to your, when you go to the checkout, you got to use promo code loud 25, no spaces. 25% 25% off of your next order. Yeah, which is a, a crazy good deal. Yeah, it's it's actually insane. Like, yeah. <laughs> kayfabe off, it is actually a, a fantastic deal. Yeah, it's like... And yeah. you help uh, us out at the podcast. Yeah, it helps us help you, and I mean, it, it's good shit. I'm going to recommend yeah, it. It's like, good shit. G- like, genuinely. I, I I smoked around this time last night while we were, while we were recording episode 10, I'm still a little bit slow. It's it's lovely. I, I I will recommend. I'm feeling nice. I recommend one of the half gram pre rolls and then one of the delta eight, little delta nine gummies. Yeah, Some I did that shit. and I'm whew, I'm feeling nice. I, I want to try it with one of the full gram pre rolls though, because I'm I'm gonna pick up a couple of those myself. I might do that later. Um, saving one of the full grams to share with my friends. But Hell that yeah. second full gram, I'm I'm probably gonna keep all to myself. I'm gonna pog that thing like a gremlin. I'm I'm almost out of my fucking half grams. I'm gonna need to get those too. <laughs> yeah, I'm only two down right now. But once I share some with my friends and they've gotten a taste of it, and maybe I share them the offer code, oh. uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep the rest of myself. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. I heard those half grams were better than Civ Five at the Brave New World expansion pack. Uh, we're uh, we're gonna have to review that, aren't we? Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have to watch sure. that sometime soon. I gotta find it again. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm sure they still syndicate it. Because it's you know, probably on gaming. Peacock, but I mean, gross. All right, so just just to uh, you know, just to make sure, cushydreams.com, K U S H Y D R E A M S dot com, and yeah. promo code loud twenty five for twenty five percent off your next order. Loud twenty five. Yeah. By the way, fantastic name for a uh, for a promo code. It really yeah, 25% is. Twenty five percent off that loud with the twenty five. Oh, fuck yeah! Anyways, all right. With that, with that, let's get back to Assassin's Creed three. So, um, Assassin's Creed three. Where do we start? Yeah. I... So, well, there's um, uh, early America. Uh, yeah, early yeah. America. See, here's the thing. 
1776. Here's the thing. 1191 Holy Land. You have minarets to climb. You have you know Christian architecture, like cathedrals that the, the, the Crusaders built. Yeah. To, sorry, to climb up. You have brilliant cities with like souks and massive walls and like, you know, all of this like construction going on. Great, great places to climb. You have an entire castle for the assassins. Amazing to climb. Then you fast forward a bit. You get to 1490s Florence. You get to oh, Ven- yeah. you get to Venice. You get to even the cities that no one really likes, like Forley and. Um, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. it's true. Everyone hates Forley. Uh, but Forley. You, you get to, you well. It, it's most people hate it because they, uh the DLC sequence takes place there, oh. and. You can't skip it on uh, on playthroughs that you have the DLC installed with. Mm-hmm. So it gets oh, yeah. kind of annoying. It's it's worse with the uh, the bonfire of the vanities. Good lord, it's worse with that. But we can talk about that more later. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. But um, oh yeah, there, fuck, where was, there was also while you're thinking of that, um, there was also a PS Vita side game which was Liberation, which was actually yes. not bad. Yes, Liberation was quite good. Uh, especially since it was a PS Vita game and yeah. you know, everyone had lower expectations. Hey, look, if you were a Vita owner, that game probably got you through a lot of really sad times. Oh, yeah. I so, know um, got, like, I, I know it got the main character of House of Cards played by uh, played by oh. that pedophile, Kevin Spacey. That's his name, oh, no. right? I yeah. know he loved it. He, he had a Vita. <laughs> Oh, well, that, that tells you that, that tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? That, that and I think he was playing... Um, was it Modern Warfare 3, or was it Cod Ghosts? I can't remember which one it was on one of the episodes. It, I don't uh, know. Could have anyway. been Black Ops 2, but yeah. So he, um, no, I'm going to talk about cards. Okay, so um, back, back to architecture. 1190s Holy Land, great architect- architecture to climb on. You get to 1190, not, not 1190s, the, the 1490s. Florence, fucking Venice. Forley, Tuscany, great places to climb. You have all of these wonderful cathedrals, you know, the sort of orange, like, orange rooftops, like the orange tiles on the rooftops. But of course, the churches. Oh, the churches. Yeah, the churches oh, are fantastic. Yeah. You have towers, like, uh, specifically the tower that's next to the uh, Il Duomo in uh, Florence, which actually isn't right next to it. It's a little ways away, and I think it's a little bit taller in the in, in the game. But, yeah. like, all of these places, amazing to climb on. You got Rome. Rome. You can climb on the Sistine Chapel. Oh, fuck yeah. Then, Revelations. The Hagia Sophia. Have you heard of the Hagia Sophia, you bitch? It was no. so fucking amazing. <laughs> and then you, you flash forward to the next game, and you have uh, old, old Jimmy John's Church down by the, down, down by the river. Oh, that's the tallest building in town. Yeah. American yeah. architecture was not built for parkour at that time. I mean, yeah. I think they underestimated how much architecture mattered to the series. It really does matter. Like, it's it's not just, oh, I'm looking at something pretty. It's having, like, pathways to move above the streets. Yeah, it's... It's, it's you know, having escape vertically. stuff. Yes. Right. And that's... That's also why the uh, enhanced "quote unquote" parkour system really sucks for Assassin's Creed Three. Yeah, that would have been uh, because... great in Assassin's Creed Two. No, that's the thing. I don't think it's good. It is I, slippery. I'm... It constantly has you running off. I have an anecdote for this, by the way. Um, it has you constantly like jumping off of cliffs that you didn't intend to jump off of, and you just intended to go like over to this fucking branch. That yeah, you like know you can land on because there's like a fucking shanty on it. Kind of like you overshoot not in, it. Not in three. Yeah, you, you overshoot it sometimes. You, you'll you like go under something when you intend to go over something because going over something gets you like, you know, a foothold to go to another thing. Um, obviously, there's just places where it gets really stupid and slippery and slick and... Uh, Sometimes your character will just stop fucking moving. So that's fun. 
Shit. Like the the Assassin's Creed three, four, and Rogue parkour system, I can't I can't really attest to Unity. I don't know how I don't know if it's changed any, but those three games, the parkour system is awful. I hate it so much because it it takes away the skill ceiling. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Uh, it, it 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 lowers the skill floor, but it also drastically lowers the skill ceiling. And kind of like puts the skill ceiling below the skill floor, if that makes sense. Where if you try to do this like cool maneuver and you wanna like you wanna go a specific path and you think it would be really nice and really efficient, uh you can just get fucked over by the parkour system and um uh, by the new parkour system. Yeah, I can't think of which game it is, but I've definitely played games before where it felt like, oh, playing the game is wrong. I should just let it play itself. Yeah, it's Resident Evil Six has that problem too. It's like specifically with the movement and how like slippery it is. Like a lot of games around that time just made movements less snappy, and I hate that. Yeah, it's it's kind of baffling. We're only yeah. just getting over it. I mean, Red Dead Two feels like you're shouting. A... Directions at Arthur from another room. Yeah. Yeah. Even even games that you would assume to be more like arcadey, like Fallout Four. Fallout Four has the stupidest fucking like like start to go and then stop going animations. Admittedly, it's not as bad as you as when you it's not, it's not as bad if you play in first person. I mean, but still, I'll say this: we're kind of getting to the point though where shooters are getting a lot more open. Like that's good. I really yeah. like that. Um, I mean, like, Doom and Doom Eternal have been a blessing for movement in games, honestly. Yes! Uh, we, we might, uh, we might have I'm, to I'm really... talking about Doom and Doom Eternal. Um, I haven't played Doom Eternal. Oh, I could, but... oh, I could talk about those games for hours. I fucking love them. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we could just talk about Doom in general, because, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Big, there's, there's yeah. so much to talk about with the whole series. Also, I'm a big fan I, of most of them, except for 3 and Eternal, basically. One, one thing I want to talk about eventually is, have you guys, this is a little off topic, I'm sorry to break the conversation, but, have you guys heard of uh, my, my house dot wad? I think oh, yes, I, oh, yeah. it, I really want to talk about that in depth. I, it is I think so we did talk good. about it a little bit at one point. But... You know yeah, during, uh, though, during one of the episodes. All, all of us get really high for like a live stream and try to play it all simultaneously and try to see who figures out what's going on. Because I've, I've only seen like the first half and I'm like... I'm oh, I've, 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 already pl- I've already yeah, played it. I already through. know what's going on. Okay, I don't. I need to do this soon. But yeah, I, I recommend going in through it. I recommend playing it blind. Yeah, getting all of the secrets that you can, and then watching a video about the story. I think the story kind of that's where it loses me a little bit. I'm I'm Just excited. I'm excited for the virtual house of leaves. Hell yeah! But <laughs> hell yeah! But yeah. Um, all right. Sorry. So, um, I, I guess I've really said all I all all I want to say about the parkour system in three four and uh, rogue but i do want to end with this anecdote real quick um so i was playing rogue mm. you know yeah it, rogue is fine you know gameplay wise so i want to collect a shanty i like shanties shanties are fun they really are so i see this shanty and it's on the log and the way shanties work in four and rogue uh, when you approach them, they start flying away from you. So, okay, you, they, they send you through a little, like, parkour thing. And this parkour thing was basically through, like, a little, kind of like a corridor uh, with, like, trees and cliffs on either side, and you run across, like, these logs and shit. And I was running along it. I was doing fine. I went to jump from a uh, sort of horizontal log to like a uh, a stump that was on the ground, like a vertical thing. I went to jump. I angled my stick accordingly. And Shay, in his infinite Irish tooth brain wisdom, decided (laughs) not to jump straight ahead, but to jump 45 degrees to his right. Oh god. Straight oh, into shit. the cliff face. And then he got stuck underneath the perpendicular uh the, the perpendicular log. 
Oh no. I had to basically wiggle the stick for a minute straight just to get him unstuck. Yeah, so me. yeah, fuck that parkour system. I hate it so much. Yeah, I mean, I remember it being at least manageable in um, 4. Because 4, I think they designed around it a little bit better. But then you're yeah. talking about Rogue, they, they, and so... I yeah, guess they, they they do make some of the same mistakes, I will say. These, these massive catastrophic failures are few and far between. But then you have stuff like you know, your character refusing to, like, take a step up half of his fucking shin height because you're not holding down the trigger. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's just, there, there are a lot of, like, nuisances, and as a whole, it's just bad. But that's not the only thing bad about Assassin's Creed 3. Sure. <laughs> Let's talk about the story. Oh. Yeah. Which part? Are we going to talk about the past or present? Uh, let's talk about the past first, because I have some issues with the past. Okay. So, um, I don't remember the exact specifics of the story, but the, uh, the things that I have issue with, I do remember. Yeah. So, there is... There is a very good intro to the Assassin's Creed 3 story. So, I, I don't want to spoil it too much. But you play as Haytham Kenway, and there's a uh, there's there's a bit of a there's a bit of a twist at the end of the first sequence. Or I think the third sequence actually. Yeah. And it it actually has Desmond audibly say, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like his voiceover coming through the animus, which doesn't happen often. Yeah, because it, it, it is kind of a, a bit of a turn where it's like, "Oh, hang on." Yeah, it, it's it's a really cool, fun thing that they did. And then the rest of the game happens. That's a shame. Um, yeah. See, uh, I think my biggest problem with the story, besides it being kind of unfinished, like there, there's a lot of like unused dialogue that's like really good, and I think the only reason they didn't use it is because, uh, uh basically just because they didn't have time to really fully implement it. So. Yeah. The yeah. But the biggest problem that I have with the story, and for most stories, most Assassin's Creed stories past this point, is that it stops being a game that takes place in history, and it starts being a history game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, where, where it becomes more like, um, more more like, like a, a magic school bus. Yeah, oh, like oh. in the first game, the most famous person you saw was King Richard. Yeah. but you see him in the middle of an argument with one of your targets, and then he leaves. It it seems like he was doing stuff before this, and then he's going to do stuff after this. And then you see him once again at the end where he has a conversation. It's the, That conversation at the end is kind of dumb, but also it's just like, you know, hey, who, who else to command the fucking British army than the British king, you know? Yeah. But that that's the only real notable figure in history that you have like access to. Then in Assassin's Creed 2, it gets a little bit, you know, fiddlier. Um you you're close friends with Leonardo, which I think that's a pass. Because, yeah. you know, he he fits the type to be like an adventure kind of out of contact character, you know? Yeah. He he's somebody that like your character probably would have ran into at that like at that point in his life. Yeah, I mean, he lived in in Florence in the 1490s, yeah, he, which is also why I excuse uh, Lorenzo. Yeah, that's also why I excuse Lorenzo de Medici, yeah. and to an extent, uh, Pope Rodrigo Borgia or Pope. Um... I mean, when your game is like you know historically based, it, it makes sense that you might have historical villains. You know? Yeah, the the problem is they started the, the first four games. They started making historically based games, and now they're making historically cringe games. Yep. But um, like it it starts to like edge up there with um with well you you meet Niccolo Machiavelli in two, but you really start like talking to him in uh in Brotherhood, and then in Revelations you meet Suleiman. But oh yeah, at the very least. 
they are integrated into the plot in a way that is believable. This and and then starting with Assassin's Creed Three, it's just oh hey, here's famous historical figure. Oh look at that, he's doing the thing that he's known for. Isn't that wacky? Help him out and get a prize. Yeah, and it got like I think I had with um uh, Syndicate. Yeah, I hear Syndicate is awful for that. But um, it's literally just a magic school bus. <laughs> Feels like yeah. it, you know. The the only the only one that I think that I've experienced that did it really well was at the very beginning of Rogue, where you assassinate Lawrence Washington. And I oh, think that's yeah. so fucking cool. Because Lawrence Washington just does die. Like he's George Washington's actual brother and he actually dies. I think it's I think it's meant to be because of a cold or uh, like the the historical yeah. fact of it is that it's like he was uh he caught like, the bronchitis flu and just died because that's what you did back <laughs> he, then he got scraped by a mosquito and instantly fell death dead like you do yeah god yeah, that makes sense you know the amount of the amount of ways people <laughs> just died in horrible ways back then that are just nothing now. It's yeah, it's impressive. it's a wonder that Ezio. It's a wonder that Ezio lived up to where his fucking hair was going gray. Yeah, considering he probably could have got like you know what probably is like an easily treatable STD now, but just would have instantly murdered him. Oh he, yeah, he fucked a lot of horrors in that series. In my oh, head, Ezio absolutely like fucked disease of the spine or something and just died. <laughs> Oh yeah, like hey, uh, yes. you have to put this, leeches on your balls or something. This poor old man has disease of the spine. We will cure him with leeches and needles. Well, now, now we must rip his spine out. Yes, the him. only way, the only way to remove the disease is to remove the diseased part. Yeah, you got to shove twenty-seven needles deep into his grundle. <laughs> Not his grundle. Not the grundle. Speaking of Grunvalls, Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. Ah, yes. Very, very nice. So, um, the only other thing that, the only other big complaint that I have about the story, again, other than being unfinished, is that Connor is a bit of a pussy bitch. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, I don't feel bad about spoiling this because it's Assassin's Creed 3, but I'm, I'm going to kind of tread carefully here because it is a pretty big, like, reveal in the story. But uh, Connor learns that uh, George Washington, the guy he was like doing jobs for and looked up to, was like fucking him over behind the back. That that sounds sexual. Fucking him oh, over oh, behind oh, his oh, back. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And uh, he doesn't really do anything. He just kind of stares angrily at him for a little bit and then just walks away. Doesn't talk to him again, but like he's well within his right to beat the shit out of George Washington then and there. Yeah. And then there's a, there's other stuff oh. like the man, man, man walks up to you in a story quest and asks, ah, Connor, yes. Will you prostrate yourself in front of these men and allow them to use your bunghole? And Connor's like, yeah, okay. Literal, actual quote. Yes, that happens. That's uh, that's sequence seven mission two. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's probably when he's still a kid. <laughs> yeah, probably. So, um, moving swiftly on from that. Yes. Uh, you know what game is good? Um, hmm, I'm gonna say Assassin's Creed Four. Blood Dragon. Yes. No, okay, that's you're it. right. Yo, yeah, that's good. So, um, at the end of Assassin's Creed Three. It ends quite definitively, you know? Like, yeah. it ends in a way that there could be more stuff, but it ends definitively. Yeah. So in Assassin's Creed 4, you play as a random game developer. Very cool. But where 3 really, really fucked itself over on the plot, where, you know, you meet all the, all the famous people... It's just kind of bare bones. There's no real point to it. The main character is a pussy bitch. Assassin's Creed 4 doesn't do anything wrong, really. Like, yeah, you meet a lot of famous pirates, but also 
it was the golden age of piracy. It was a small world back then, you know? Yeah. There's there's more of an excuse for a group of like, you know, twenty something pirates to know each other than it, it you know, it, it's more believable for that to happen than it is for you to just kind of stumble across Benjamin Franklin in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I mean that was also a very a very important location for piracy too so like a lot yeah. of people were there and it also it 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 has a lot of points to make about like the assassin ideology which the assassin ideology itself and like the conflict there and with the templars was basically brought up and challenged in the first game and then immediately turned into well the templars are the villains and the assassins are the good guys like because in the first game the the entire thing with the templars is they just want peace and that's a very noble thing they want peace they're just going about it the wrong way instead of letting the people decide to be peaceful they're saying nah fuck you i'm going to control everybody so there's no more war yeah. and it it really it really like made you think and made you like think okay what side do i really like stand on with that with the templars being peace but you give up your freedoms or the assassins being well peace would be really nice but individual freedom is still the most important you know yeah and then assassin's creed 2 just drops that uh it's basically oh the templars are bad guys because they do a bad things and it just kind of keeps on going through that until um, until Assassin's Creed 4, which actually has, like, things to say about the Assassin ideology and how that fits with, like, piracy and shit. And it's really cool. And also, like, the interpersonal relationships are really cool. Like, it kept, it kept me hooked until the end, which is really, really nice. Yeah, 4's got a lot of, about it that's, you know, pretty cool. I also liked... I was always a fan of that little, uh, like, idle game shit with your with your your fleet. Yeah, you, know, where you, you send it out, and like eight hours later, you you know, it's like a phone game or something. But I, I got into it when I was playing. I it. I really wish there was a way to interface with that while not having to open up your game and, and go then load into, into the, the game, yeah. and then you know either detach from the wheel of your ship or get to your ship. Then go all the way over to your uh, to your cabin, then open the door, and then sit through the loading screen, and then go over to the table and sit through that loading screen, and then finally you're at Kenway's fleet. Yeah. But it's it's a it's a fun thing to do. It, it's it's best if you do it during gameplay, I guess, because then like you know you'll be like at the very beginning you'll be like okay well let's send some guys off on a mission, and then like you run around and you shoot some guys with cannons. And then you're like, oh, it's been eight hours. I'm gonna go and check, you know, what what the what the boys have done. And then you have like a whole bunch of trade routes open. It's really nice. And there's also the naval combat, which is fucking phenomenal. Oh, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it's a it's weird that that like Thailand Ubisoft game, whatever, what is it called? Oh, the um... Uh, Skull and Bones. Yeah, why is that in fucking development hell when they basically already made the game ten years ago? Uh, because it's changed development, like, 17 times. I mean, that's confusing, considering, you know, again, it, it feels like they could just kind of transplant a lot of what was in 4 into a new game. They basically already did that with Rogue, too, so... Yeah, it it's weird, like, they've they've decided to make it, like, a... Sing there's a single player thing, and there's also like a multiplayer mode in it now. It's like a PvP mode. Oh, we're trying to do Sea of That's Thieves, strange. also. Uh, not really. This is more like, you know, two naval ships like battle the fuck between each other. That's oh, so it's like a versus for. game instead yeah. of yeah. Uh... Okay. It it's planned cool. to be like you know you and another ship, and you have other things like you have to basically do all the things on your ship to take down the other player. Which could be fun. I hope. Yeah, it's fun. it has it has it has potential. Um, Sea of Thieves has shown that people really want to be pirates. You know. Yeah, like genuinely, it's, it's just nice. 
I yeah. like pirates. They're fun. But I, um, yeah, AC four is a real fun pirate time. Yeah, Assassin's if you Creed game, it's a little iffy. It's I would say it doesn't do the gameplay quite as well as as other Assassin's Creed games, but the story is great. The story is very much an Assassin's Creed story, and it's very good. Oh yeah. Now with the main plot, the uh, overarching future plot. Uh, I mean, the overarching future plots all over the place, man. I do like that it goes. It it does kind of link with the. Uh, it does kind of link with the uh, the past plot. Yeah. I like that, but the way that it links, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the way that it links. And also, just kind of how it's over and done with immediately. Uh, it's just... We gave up Desmond for this. And I mean, Desmond is a bit of a like a, a dickhead. But also... There's lore there. Yeah, like we were familiar with Desmond. We know his struggle. We don't know anything about silent protagonist game developer number 72. You know? Yeah. Yeah, then... but I mean, like, don't some of the like tech support people from the other games show up in four? Yeah, like, yeah. They like infiltrate they, uh, the send game you... company or something. They send you messages, and I think they show up at one point. Yeah, but they show up after I believe the sec, like the third person you assassinate. Yeah, so there's like some semblance of trying to connect it to the old games, but you know, it's kind eventually of they gave up on there. that. Yeah. yeah. Now. After this is where he starts getting into the games, I don't really know past Unity, because I kind of stopped playing after Unity. Yeah, I stopped playing after... Well, actually, I stopped playing after 3, and I just picked up 4 and uh, Rogue later. Hey? I mean... Which I, I, chose, I chose a bad time to get off. If I had just waited one more game, it would have been good again. But then that would have given yeah. me hope. And, and even... given, the, given the future of the franchise, I'm glad I didn't get any hope. <laughs> yeah. Understandable, honestly. God damn. I mean, you know, taken in a bubble, a lot of the newer Assassin's Creed's are, you know, fine. It's like yeah. it's that insidal insidious type of like shitty game where it's like, you know, it's fine. It's not obviously big yeah. rigs bad. They're well made. I'm not gonna I, deny that. I would like, personally disagree that they're bad. Um I do kind of want to get into a little bit of why the new Assassin's Creed games I just fucking hate. Yeah. But, uh, real quick, actually. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I, You're good. This is, this is really, this is really a testament to the, uh, to the sponsor. Because <laughs> I, I, I think I'm getting a second wave and I haven't done anything today. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. So, um. Yeah. Rogue. Rogue is is kind of wild because they decided to release that at the same time as Unity, but not yeah, on the same platforms. It's, it's, it's like it's like they decided to. You know how games nowadays are doing like cross platform, like um yeah. What was that? What was that game? We were talking about it the other day. Um, uh, Jedi Survivor. Yeah, Jedi Survivor is getting the PS4 version, and yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like that. <laughs> But instead of making a version of the game that's just, you know, looks kind of poopy for the previous generation, it's just a different new game. <laughs> yeah. And from what I've heard, people like uh, Rogue more than Unity. Yeah. I, I like it more than Unity but in Uni a lot of ways. <laughs> Ubisoft is no stranger to doing this because they also made two versions of Splinter Cell Double Agent. Yep. Yeah. Which is and, now and also the a game version. Re sucked. We've now mentioned we that twice. Oh, we, we oh God! No, let's not start so another one. Starting again. I, I mean, I'm okay with because uh, Splinter Cell is a series of that, and I'll say this controversially, I don't think has a bad entry except for its last one. <laughs> That's I not mean, controversial at all, really. Actually, what's what's what's, what's the what's the most recent one? Blacklist. I've heard that Blacklist is good. I don't like it. 
I mean, yeah. they start dumbing things down a lot. You know? I, honestly, I, 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 I hated Conviction so much. See, here's the thing. I kind of like Conviction for what it, what it was trying to do. And it is a fun... I suppose. It's a fun, just... like Because at that point, Sam Fisher's just a murder master. You know? <laughs> That's that's the way I consider that game is just it's Sam Fisher just taken to his hundred percent. He's just like, all right, you know, in that story, in that story, he has a very good reason to just be pissed at everyone. So, I get it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk but, about um, that series one day. That's not for yeah. Me. Eventually, I, I do need to play more than just the first three. <laughs> if they're remaking the first one, though, here's hoping that oh, isn't God. shit. The first, the first three and conviction. I, I don't count. Or are they going to manage to remake a game when it doesn't have the Ubisoft formula in it? Yeah, that's why there hasn't been. A, apparently, hasn't been a, they're struggling. Hasn't been a Splinter Cell in like a decade because they can't figure out how to include towers and shit in a stealth game. Yeah, that, that or like they couldn't find a way to make it into Rainbow Six Siege too. Yeah. But that's that's, Sam that's in Rainbow Six Siege. That's and, the thing. The That's the six. funny thing. Right, right. They could just right. make it into Hitman. They could. They could. Just, just you know, shadow, like, nighttime stealth, like, based Hitman. You know, the one thing like, I'll say about Assassin's Creed is it kept the flag going for stealth games in a way, you know? Yeah, it, it's it's more of a social stealth, and I think that yeah. standard stealth... I, I think standard stealth was dying for a while. But at the very least, you know, Assassin's Creed kept some form of stealth going. Yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Sorry, um, Rogue. So, um, Rogue. Yeah. So the gameplay is basically just uh, Assassin's Creed Four. Yeah. But a bit different. Some of it's better. Some of it's worse. A lot of ice. Yes. A lot of ice. You can you can ram it with your ship ram, which is like longer now yeah, what, what what is the name That's of the ship cool. in that game I'm, I'm drawing a blank the morrigan the morrigan yeah that ship fucked it looks cool i like it that and the jackdaw are both yeah i, I, like I think the jackdaw I, I think they're both iconic ships now in a way oh yeah man yeah no it, my it was, i was glad to see okay. the, that the ship combat got a little more love because yeah unity completely went away from it yeah. Which made sense for its story, I get it. But Yeah, I mean, there weren't many boats going around Paris in the, what, 1500s? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> the, the 200 AD. <laughs> Which, yeah, I mean, I get it. Although, God, they could have done a little bit more with some things in that game when we get there. I'll yeah. talk about it, but... So, um, the story. Yeah. That's my, my main problem with, uh, with... Uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue yeah. is the story. Isn't the story the thing everybody likes about that game specifically? Here's the thing. they I think they just look at it as it's different, therefore it's good. Here's the thing, though. It isn't really different. See, they say that you play as a Templar. And you do in, like, name. But from, from what I've played, I've played through a, a decent amount enough to where... Uh, up to where Shay's like inducted into the Templar Order and stuff. Uh, they basically just flop the ideologies around. <laughs> where, yeah. Wh- yeah, they 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 made the assassins, you know. Oh, we got to control these guys. Yeah, the assassins and they made got the Templars real, like dickish in that, and also in in Unity. Yeah, and it's funny because some of these are the same characters that we meet in. I gotta take my chicken out of the oven. Oh shit! Huh, huh, huh. Yeah, but, but some some of these, yeah, some of these are the same characters that you meet in Assassin's Creed three and four. I, I realize like we... Adewale and um, uh, uh, Connor's master. What's his name? Oh, I forgot off the top of my head. He has a cool name, and I just forgot it. Um, you know, Tristan, I realized we might have to split this into two episodes because you got the chicken done. Well, <laughs> um. Honestly, I don't really have too much else to say other than uh, other other than s- screaming for thirty minutes about uh about the uh, about the new ones. I yeah, mean, that's what I'm I here think, for. I think, we'll, I think we'll kind of generate like just 
lump them together because I don't have anything to say. Yeah, about so I, I haven't done, I, I haven't looked into or played much of Unity, Syndicate, or any of the other ones that released between then and uh, Origins. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the lead on this one. <clears throat> I played um, a bit of Origins. I, I So Unity, once we get to the RPG ones. Yeah, Unity is oh. a lot of a lot of fun, I think. It just, it was really fucking buggy. Yeah, I've heard that. I played some of it. It's um, It's got an interesting new hardcore system. And other okay. stuff about it that's kind of cool and interesting, but yeah, there's a lot of problems, also. One second. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I think that yeah, no, like, g- going from Rogue to Unity, though, was kind of interesting but then releasing it on the same week around the uh oh okay so yeah um what are you doing what the fuck is happening bane oh i was asking if you wanted to speed run these ones oh yeah uh so i'll I'll just go ahead and say it since we're bringing it out of the open um it's slow cooking oh so I, i didn't know how you wanted to do it I, I can I can keep the it in there for another disaster game. is okay. is is averted. I didn't know if it, okay. I didn't know if it was like chicken yeah. explodes in t minus five minutes. Okay, you're, you're... yeah, um, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I'd say maybe ten more minutes on this one. Okay, but um, because I because I'm hungry and I want to eat it. It's I really good. Like, but, 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 but um, so, so Assassin's Unity... Creed has been taken down. All those games taken down by chicken. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, Listen, these later games are good. they kind of blur together for me. They're too long. Yeah, yeah Unity yeah. was a very buggy mess, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, motherfucker! Um, the co-op is is really good, and I do kind of wish more games in the series had co-op because it is fun being you know synchronized taking down guards with like four players at the same time. It's fun. It's just it was I bet. on a game that was kind of buggy and a mess. Yeah. But it's also a very well detailed version of Paris too. Like, it, it was. Fair. It's all set around the same time as Assassin's Creed Three, which, um, movement wise, this is a game you want to play when it comes to movement. Because, all right, I'll, I'll be called. the judge of that. I, I do recommend playing it. Then Syndicate. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest here. I spent about four hours of Syndicate, and I just was kind of done. I was like, okay, oh, yeah. Oh. It, it was rough. So um, it was rough. I haven't really played the Chronicles games, but I think those came out around this time. Yeah, those look fine. I I played the China one. I haven't played the other two, but it was. It I've was heard fun. I've heard a mixture of good things and bad things about them, so I don't know. Um, I but, I can't tell you. So. Well, like I like I did say, it it kind of hits with that same vibe of the original Prince of Persia games, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Um, and then from there we got. Uh, our first RPG ones. We're skipping the movie. Yeah, like we're not even uh, trying to touch the movie. Yeah, um, we can if we if we, if we like read as video it, game it's... movies or something as an episode. We yeah, should. or just or, we or just the part love, two to this. We can talk about my love for Uwe Boll's uh, postal film, which I think I've never seen it. I kind of wanted to see it, so yeah, maybe. I you know I think it's that might be one we should watch on like Prime as a video night thing. Something like that. I don't, for... have, uh, I don't uh, have Prime. Well, I mean, I have I have no money and oh, nothing to. My, I have nothing. My brother, there are ways. Don't worry. Oh yeah. Okay. You. Yeah. Yeah. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm sniffing. I'm, 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 I'm dipped to the keen. You know. Um. But yeah. No. I. I think that. Um. You know, we're gonna get in the RPG era, and that is. It's an era I kind of like, but also kind of fucking hate. <laughs> Well, I mean, we've already talked about it a little bit. They yeah. just decide to become Witcher games, uh, except, you know, yeah, which, really bland yeah. and, like, everything, I don't like, know. Well, I think Origins, for what it is, is a fun game. Like, I'll, It reminds I'll, I'll me of... Origins. Yeah, it I mean, The me Witcher so is much... a good game, so hey. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but, like, not even The Witcher. It reminds me so much of Skyrim, of just, like, that... I think we talked in the Bethesda Land Easy Pete... Difficult Pete at Bethesda Land episode. Uh, we Amazing. talked about, like, how Skyrim, you know, and a lot of the Bethesda, like, Fallout 4, it feels like sort of a... just a theme park of stuff you can do, and that's what those are. It's like... Want to go do this open world activity? What about this open world activity? Like, I I don't yeah, know. You're not it, wrong. 
it's, it's not really like a city or anything. It's not like a real designed place. All right, guys, uh, I'll like... be right back. I smell some burning, so uh, okay, I'm talking about this. All right, yeah, understandable. Uh, I'm leaving that in. I'm, I'm just the, tri- it. The, the chicken has consumed Tristan and uh, okay. Assassin's Creed with it. Um, to, to tie people over, because I don't, I don't know what else to say really until he gets back, because I, I do want to hear his opinion on it. Um, I'll link this to Claw, because this is something I just have no idea who else to talk about to in this moment. But somebody made an adapter for the uh, PlayStation 1 and 2 that lets you use modern controllers for it. Which oh, is totally not Assassin's Creed related, but you know what it is related oh. to? Prince of Persia related. I guess so, yeah. Go, now go, you can play... Go play Prince of Persia. Now you can play Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, on your PS2 with your PS5 controller, and it'll probably still be better than the actual remake they're doing. Yeah, you would... Please, please, dear God, if you're working on that remake, I, I wish you the best. Please make it good. Send help. But send me a copy of that version of it. They printed it to disc. That's the thing. They printed it to fucking disc. Huh? And then oh, they just we were, canceled it? We, yeah, they just we were ta- we ended up talking about uh Sands of Time. We just wanted to kinda oh, like hold yeah. it until you got back. So I talked about it. Yeah, my my uh, my PS4. my my house burned down. It's fine. Oh, oh, yeah, that's cool. yeah, it was it was just some sauce boiling over. Mm. But uh yeah. so uh RPG Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, like they they may be fun, like, you know. Like from in a, from a gameplay sense, but my my my, my thing has always been, yeah. you know, uh, Resident Evil is fun. I like my Resident Evil games; they're they're nice. You know, I'll yeah. play a Resident Evil game. Like, I, how many hours do I have on Resident Evil Five? Just on Steam alone. Oh god, almost a hundred. <laughs> That's yeah. just on Steam. I have it on three other consoles, but. I love Resident Evil, right? Yeah. If the next Zelda game was res- just Resident Evil, I would hate it because that's not what I'm going into Zelda for, you know? Yeah. Like if if the next uh, uh I don't know if 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 <laughs> if the next Elder Scrolls game was a kart racer. I mean, I like kart racers, but that's not that's not the experience I signed up for, you know? Yeah, that's not your usual like. And for yeah, yeah, and for Assassin's Creed, I kind of you know at the very least assume that some assassinating is going to go on. You'd hope. But instead, no, you get boss fights. That's it. <laughs> and then yeah. it, from from what I hear, it's even worse with uh, Odyssey. I yeah, uh, Odyssey gets a little absurd and. There is plot things that kind of do explain why there's, um, like, minotaurs and shit. Well, it's still supposed to be the fucking... Kind of... Yeah, well, like, <laughs> the Animus or whatever, sort yeah. of, right? It's it's within... It, so the Animus has kind of changed design a few times. There's a public-facing Animus, which is a games console thing. Yeah, I, I, I do like that aspect of the main yeah. story. I think that's fun. Where it's like... They're, they're basically it's selling... Even, like, in the universe, it is Ubisoft, right? I mean, not even... It's not Ubisoft, but they but say that they made Ubisoft. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, it, it's, it's Abstergo Games, which yeah. is basically just Ubisoft. Well, especially well, what, what Abstergo does is they take the, the Assassin name and ideas and kind of tarnish them in a, in a way. It's like they, they make them, like, fake stories, but also, like, make them look like assholes the entire time. Yeah. It, it's interesting, and it is kind of fascinating if if you want to look into like modern parallels of media manipulation. You can you can really yeah. look a little deeper into it and kind of be like, oh, I think I think it's I think there. it's a really fun concept. Oh yeah, and it makes what for we're talking about um, animus. yeah the animus, but yeah the, the new animus that the characters use, it, it still works the same way. It's just a different design. You know, they just have to lay down in something and, like, properly use the machine. Yeah. Well, and now, like, evil Ubisoft Abstergo company is making 
How many games? How many you Assassin's uh, Creed games? Can we like go 16, through the list? Right? I believe there's nine in development. There's mm. the VR game and its sequel. They're already kind of doubling down on the sequel. There is Mirage, which is the game we're getting this year. There's... Um, I'm trying to pull up the whole list here. <laughs> um, so you have Infinity, which will be like a platform and has three games oh, being developed within it. Oh, good. It's yeah. gonna be a live service. My not, favorite. Well, not necessarily a live service, but kind of it's like like Halo Infinite is gonna be a platform for Assassin's Creed for ten years or I, something. I, actually, I do have a better kind of thing for the way they're gonna be doing with this new COD is it's the, like the same engine, the same base game, but I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're buying essentially the next game that will be within the same engine but shares similar features so because there's going to be two single player games within infinity and there's a multiplayer game within infinity hmm. so there's codename red which is the um J japanese set game there's a uh, codename hexy or hex h-e-x-e um, and that's going to be set during the Witch Trials of the Holy Roman Empire, which, I'm going to be honest here, that, Interesting. that sounds fucking wild. Yeah, like, you always hear uh, Witch Trials, you think, okay, American, you know, yeah. Puritan stuff, but the the Witch Trials of the Holy Roman Empire, that's interesting. Oh yeah, and then the, the multiplayer game is uh, titled Codename Invictus. I mean, the thing is, is like, I've heard a lot of people saying that they should just try to completely abandon the Assassin's Creed lore and just make these, like, historical games. And I don't know why, I guess just because of the name, they have to do this. Like, yeah. they could just make it like a side series, like Metal Gear Solid versus Metal Gear. And just make it like a AC histor Histories or whatever. And it's, it does has nothing to do with fucking Abstergo because they clearly don't want to do anything with that. Or, and they're, like, um, tied down to that. They they have kind of been making, like... Valhalla made a lot of steps towards making Abstergo a threat again. Oh, okay. Oh, hopefully. They keep doing this, though. It's like, like oh, yeah. shit or get off the pot, you know? We we get cocked teased so much as Assassin's Creed fans. It's, 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 it's almost a, like, masochistic relationship. Yeah, I, I do. I do like. Um, yeah. I think it was Rogue, where uh, it, it was either Rogue or Unity, yeah. where um, the future plot is literally you experiencing it. It yeah, it was yeah. And I like that. I think that's fun. And I think that maybe they could they could do that a bit more. Which because, game? Uh, uh, it was either Rogue or U Unity. Okay, Unity. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, I think, it, yeah, Unity had some weird shit. I only played a little of it, but you're like a, working for some kind of archaeology company or something, I, I don't know, it's it strange. Yeah, I'm trying to see where, um, there, there is, yeah, I'm trying to get everything here, but yeah, the, the two VR games, there's uh, Codename Jade, which uh, is a mobile, it's an action RPG styled mobile one, so it's like the unity rogue stuff which makes more sense for a mobile game it oh, looks yes. good that's the thing i'll say I can, is, I cannot imagine a ubisoft mobile game is gonna wind up all that amazing i, I mean yeah it the thing is like mo mobile gaming has kind of gotten to the point where you can put basically like a playstation 3 or well, yeah but they never well, do i just saw oh. ricky berwick's ass oh, nice. oh god <laughs> um <laughs> I mean, there's also supposedly a Netflix Assassin's Creed mobile game, which may or may not That's... be kind of a live action series. What are are, are Netflix games good? Uh they're somewhat okay. Uh, okay. If you have a Netflix um, subscription, at least in America, uh, subject to change across countries, uh, they oh, offer also games. Also, depending on whether they were fucking take it away from you like they did with password sharing yeah which fuck that's that fun. that's such a pain in the ass um yeah. but yeah they've got a lot of mobile games um some of them are like you know balloons tower defense six which is a game you can buy on mobile for like six bucks but it's 
if you're a subscriber to Netflix, you get it. Uh, nice. Like, cut the rope, shit like that. Then there's some exclusive stuff, but... Yeah, it's not really worth subscribing to Netflix for, though. Yeah. It's no, not, it's I mean... not, it's not also the quality of Apple Arcade, which actually has some real Okay, alright, yeah. I cancelled my you. Netflix months ago. It was a combination of, like, what's the point? I, I Just only... what's the point? And also the fucking password sharing thing pissed me off. I only, like, resub to Netflix whenever a show I want is coming back, because I don't, like, Netflix has dropped in their instant library so much that, I, honest to God, fucking Paramount Plus has everything I want, and I don't like having Paramount Plus. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> awful. Nice. I, so, only, um... I only use that for um, Star Trek now. That's it. Yeah, sorry. Nice. So um I I think that's everything. That's kind of it. There there is a new Assassin's Creed coming out this year. Um it looks good. We've talked about it oh, multiple yeah. times. Yeah, M- Mirage. It's it seems like it's going back to the Assassin's Creed one roots, which I'm a fan of. I like myself. What Assassin's was the deal? Creed. Okay, what was the deal with the fucking Watch Dogs 3 Assassin's Creed DLC? Wait, oh, what? um that was like so so that was a weird thing because it was only like cosmetics. Oh. There there is there's plot connections to like the Assassin's Creed universe within Watch Dogs, but it doesn't the way the only way I can describe it is it doesn't really matter on either end. It's like they're a little just nods. Okay. Yeah. I it, thought that they were making it like a real story connection crossover thing, but I guess that's if yeah. honestly, I think if done well, that could be pretty cool. Oh, it it would be pretty I mean, awesome. It's they're just, they're both well, like, like they'll never you know, Assassin's before. Creed has espionage elements, and you know Watch Dogs is pretty espionage like focused. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I know that uh, Saints Row and Red Faction were both technically in the same universe. Yep, because they both had the Altor Corporation or something like that. And, uh, and now, um, and now Vatillon, uh, Vatillon, Volition, there we go, nailed it, 15th time. There we go. Um, now they don't own the rights to either of those franchises, so. Oh, fun. Yep. <laughs> they, yeah. Deep Silver owns the rights, and now they're owned by Embracer, so. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking of, like, yeah, sometimes companies do do that, like, inter-universe crossover kind of deal, and it's kind of fun. I mean, it's when, weird to think the most successful inter like inter universe crossover is now Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite has basically just kind of become like the slop of pop culture. Well, it, it's also weird because like Fortnite has treated some properties better than other companies have treated their own fucking properties. Yeah, like I legitimately, if, if if Fortnite got like access to Silent Hill stuff. They would treat it with more respect than Konami has has treated oh, it in the oh past yeah. like ten years. Dude, fucking Dead by Daylight has been the most respectable thing to happen to Silent Hill since PT. Oh yeah, which is sad to say because this game is rough. I'm I've been playing it a lot recently. Yeah, uh, I, I will say I will say uh, maybe tying into a uh, near future, actually uh, probably like future in like, like a few months. Uh, to, uh, Hyper Fixations episode. Uh, they are doing a Doctor Who uh, crossover in oh, yeah. uh, like January. Seriously? Yep. And also, spe- speaking of Doctor Who crossovers, uh, Magic the Gathering is, is doing one uh, in like a couple months. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which... Crazy. So- something we didn't record for a podcast last night, and I kind of wanted to, was somebody stole... Fallout? 300- no, somebody oh. stole $300,000 worth of, I think, Magic the Gathering cards from Gen Con. Holy oh, shit. Huh. Yeah, which... Based? Uh, I mean, no, nothing. I'll, I'll talk about that more on the next episode of Loud Equals Fun. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, this this has been... Um, are we going to call this episode 11, or just going to uh, do we're, this? We're going to call this, we're gonna call this hyperfixation Episode one. A. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Letter it. That only gives us 26 of these, though, yeah. so we got to use them sparingly. No, then you, then, then you have a... Then you have well, A's, then you the, oh, AAs, you have acrylic A-C. letters. <laughs> you start using, like, Arabic font. Epi- episode okay, backwards R. 
Here's the problem, though. We do that, we'll suddenly get, like, an audience of fucking Russians, and that's all we'll get. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> They'll learn English just listening. Fate worse than death. Oh. So, <laughs> come <laughs> uh, So, um... Are are we gonna are we gonna yeah. post this uh, publicly? Uh, yeah. Tell you what, we'll, we'll post we'll post this one publicly early. Then each one yeah, will go on the as Patreon a sneak for preview. Each one will go to Patreon for at least a week, possibly two. That sounds good. Oh yeah. Which yeah. Uh, I'll start updating the Patreon a little bit more. I need to actually do shit with it. But so they'll they'll go yeah. public eventually, but patrons yeah. get it first. Okay. They'll, they'll get yeah. It yeah, they get it. They get it for like a month. They'll get it first, Something and like it will probably go on. I'll probably make a separate feed. Like a separate Spotify feed, just to not like, not to necessarily like call, call quote unquote clutter it up, but kind of just keep my autism in one place. I get you. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Make it look clean. <laughs> yeah. And then, hey, you know, um, of course, I I think we might do the next one for. I'll have to do these in separate parts just because of how absurd COD Zombies lore is. I'd love fine. to do these over time, but. Yeah, I, I think I've had zombies I've, number one in the bag ready. I've realized that Sonic the Hedgehog lore is one that I should do. Oh, fuck just, yes. like, well, that general, would be fun. Yeah, general Sonic stuff. You know, I history. I definitely, you know, I definitely at some point want to do Doctor Who. Yeah, be absolutely. Too. Because I'm one of those ones. Admittedly, I my knowledge of classic Who is kind of limited. I'll I know on. some things. I recommend it. I've seen it's some, a, like, you know, third and fifth Doctor a little bit, but I haven't, it's, I, I need to go back. I really it's like better, third Doctor. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. But it's, it's better if you view it as, like, a play, a stage okay. play, instead of, like, a... Because, you know, like, the oh, structure I, I do remember watching an, a random, like, serial at one point with the Master in it, and I forget, I think it was, like, the fifth Doctor... But the the most exciting special effect in the episode was up the master stood on a platform that raised up a little bit, and there were some lights and fog, <laughs> oh, and was, it was like yeah, the most dramatic that's, shit. That, that's that's eighties Doctor Who in a nutshell. Right there. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the 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 budget was not good after that point. No. Budget non-existent. <laughs> uh, so um. So, yeah. I guess that'll do it for our first uh, Hyperfixations episode. Yeah, it's been real. Yeah. Well, with that, folks, um, yeah, we, we've we've had a good one. It's been a wild one. Also, holy shit, two episodes in two days. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to... We're gonna... Italy with it's haste. Been, been Halo night tomorrow night for us, yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to be so busy. <laughs> Loud equals Halo. Hell well, yeah. at the very least, after this, I'm going to have some wonderful uh wonderful chicken bacon wrapped chicken it's gonna taste great Ooh, nice watch a fun little stream yeah, I'm gonna so make some um steak sandwiches hell yeah i'm gonna get something yeah. i don't know yet no. all right well i will talk to you guys tomorrow and if, for all of you listeners uh, yeah. good night yeah. i love you sweet dreams <laughs> take it easy Push penis dreams, cloud 25 penis Yes. Cushydreams.com. Remember, cushydreams.com, K U S H Y dreams.com. You can use promo code LOUD25 to get 25% off your next order. Hell use yeah. LOUD25 and... to get 25 off that LOUD, baby. You know what I'm Hell saying? Hell yeah, it's baby. You know earlier. what? You're supporting us. So yeah. Yeah. Of course, 21 uh, age of older, uh, United States yes. only. And of course, with that, folks, good night and penis. Penis. By the way, Desmond Miles had a son. Penis. <laughs> there. We go. I cut it off just after that. There you go. I I, I got it. In. <laughs>